There we go. Welcome, everybody. I'm Chris Woolley, and I'm your host for Let's Develop. And this is a bi-weekly webinar series where we bring in amazing photographers, and they're just sharing their passion with our community. And today, we're going to be looking with Megan at photographing the Northern Lights, which is going to be crazy, crazy cool. But before we get to that, uh, here's a little bit about the program. This is Let's Develop. So we do a webinar every two weeks where we bring in awesome photographers. Um, so if you have a topic that you're interested in, shoot me a message or put it in the chat. I uh, do want to give a shout out to American Color Imaging. Thank you so much for helping us put this on and get the reach out and uh, telling all of our friends about it. If you missed the last episode, we had Ellie Elliott on, and she was talking about hands-on marketing. Um, so you can check out the replay on that one. I'll also shoot you the link to that in the follow-up email that's going out after this as well. But uh, let's dive into what our content today is. So uh, if you do have questions at any point for Megan, be sure to put them into the chat. Uh, I'll be reading those and monitoring that one live, and we'll be able to ask Megan questions so we can figure out how to photograph the Northern Lights. So let's kind of talk about Megan now, because she's pretty awesome. Her camera's live. We can see some of her artwork up here. She is from Minnesota, in case you missed that uh, during the opening chats. And she's been photographing the Northern Lights since about 2015. And she's just totally focused on the bold and colorful images and landscapes that are there that you don't normally get to see. So she likes to use long exposure and light painting techniques and basically just bringing life to really, really cool stuff. She's been published like crazy. Uh, she's got a storefront and has a ton of information to share with us on uh, photographing the Northern Lights. So uh, welcome, Megan, and thank you so much for joining Hi. us tonight. Thanks for having me. This is so exciting. Right. We're going to have a blast today. Yeah. So yeah. tell me a little bit about your uh, passion for the Northern Lights. How'd that start? Well, let's see. Let me start my first. Um, let's see. Will this go on the next slide here? Yep, we can see your screen. Okay. Well, I'm Megan and I'm the photographer and I am a farmer's wife and mom of three boys. Um, so I'm really busy with uh, chasing kids around, but uh, we actually live on an 80 acre farmyard in Northwest Minnesota. So we um, obviously have really good views of the Northern light skies. We have, you know, not a lot of light pollution here. It's out in the country. Um, so I, you know, obviously have good opportunity to, to see all this. Um, and I've been running a portrait photography business since 2005, but I started the Northern lights around 2015. So that's kind of when it all started. I actually, I mean, we've had Northern lights around here my whole life, but I didn't really pay attention other than occasionally I'd see them. And one night my friend like called me and she's like, are you looking outside right now? And I was like, no, I was just in my office. And I looked outside and I had never seen them that amazing before. So of course I grabbed my camera and started taking pictures. And I didn't even know really what I was doing. I mean, I'm a photographer, but I'm not, I'd never done that kind before. So I was just like experimenting. And from that night on, I was, I was hooked. So that's where it all started from. Oh, and you have such beautiful work yeah. on this. Uh, Megan was Thank one of those uh, uh, people that came from a request from one of our viewers wanting to know more about Northern Lights photography. And I ran into Megan a few years ago uh, when I was out in Minnesota and uh, we kind of connected and she shared some of her passion for photographing the Northern Lights. And I was just like, what? This is just completely yeah. next level <laughs> stuff. Uh, so I'm very, very excited to, to learn. I've got my notepad ready so I can start taking notes yeah. as well. On there. And has any, I would love to ask your audience, like, has anyone that's watching on right now, have you ever seen the Northern Lights or attempted to, to photograph them? I'm like curious of like kind of what people have done. So let me know if you've ever seen them or where you saw them. Or... seen them from a plane. Tammy has in Alaska. Ooh, Missy has. Oh, Ashley cool. runs a local group in her area. Uh, William oh, photographs awesome. them. Kenneth has. Yeah. So that's awesome. Yeah, it's kind of fun. Like people that photograph the Northern Lights kind of gravitate towards each other. We like the same thing and it's fun to share tips and tricks and whatever. So I'm excited to share today kind of my experience and my style. You can see like I am a little more bold, like bold and kind of crazy with my editing. I mean, I try to do a little bit more surreal look, but everything is what Mother Nature gives me. I just take it and create something kind of unique with them. So I do a lot of, you know, um, farm vehicles, but also like quirky little things I find out in the middle of nowhere. Um, Cause 
I live in my, my business is called Kitson County Skies. So everything is done within Kitson County. Once in a while, I'll go outside of our area. But the, but the main reason I do it around here is because I can quickly run out and go do it because you sometimes the Northern Lights show up out of nowhere and you kind of have to just take off. Yeah, so time. let's do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And there's been times where I'm like, Oh my gosh, I got, I'm in my pajamas, but I got to get my stuff together and, and go. So, so these are kind of some of my favorite images here. And then a um, couple more here. These are again, enhanced. I think a lot of people that see the Northern Lights are surprised when they see them. They aren't quite as vibrant as this. But the other thing I always tell people is that the Northern Lights are probably like this, but our eyes can't see all the colors quite as vibrant, but I just like to make them kind of fun and and that's just kind of my artistic version of how they look. So, yeah. So I wanted to start too with like kind of a quick science lesson because I think some people are curious just what are the Northern Lights? Like, you know, people ask me all the time, like, how do you even know when they're happening and stuff? So um, they're actually electrically charged particles from space entering the Earth's upper atmosphere at a very high speed. And these are um, coming from the sun and they're actually solar storms on the sun's surface that give out like huge clouds of electrically charged particles. So these are like traveling ob obviously millions of miles and, and of course they collide with earth. And then they become captured in the earth's magnetic field and accelerating down towards the north and south poles. So that's why we say like Northern lights and there. And I did mention earlier that there is Southern lights as well. Um, and this is why the aurora activity again at the magnetic poles. So it's, and there's more to this of course, but this is kind of like the, the basic kind of how, how it works how it goes. yeah so i just found this image online this isn't my image but it just shows you like so that's how kind of how they can forecast them because they can i guess they can see what's going on in the sun like they'll say a solar flare or something's coming towards the earth so you can kind of get geared up like like something will be happening soon so a lot of that technical sciencey stuff i'm not as good at um, but there's people out there, especially in the Facebook groups that know a lot more about this than I do. I just want to go take the pictures, but I also find it cool to, to see kind of how that goes, like the science part of it. And the other thing is like the colors. So here's actually one of my first pictures I ever took. And this, I guess that I've heard and I've seen too, like the pinks colors are a little more rare. Um, but the most common color is green. Somebody, you know, says that they see the green and to our eyes, it's a little more like dull green, grayish green, but the cameras just capture the color. Even with a short exposure, you'll see the color really come through on the camera. So this is just some more sciencey stuff real quick. Just kind of what makes the colors like, so if you want to look over it, there's like pink and dark red or like the edge of the Aurora, they have like pink or dark fringe, which is nitrogen molecules. Um, and then the red is a bit higher and atmosphere collisions with oxygen atoms and all that stuff. So it's all sciencey stuff, but, and then blue and purple hydrogen and helium molecules. Um, so yeah, all that sciencey stuff just to show the beautiful colors. So any questions so far? Is anyone? <laughs> Not yet. Nope. Not yet. They're just soaking it up. Okay. Just want to check in. Yeah. If you do have um, questions, okay. put them in the chat. Yeah, let me know. I'm here to answer any questions you have. Um, this is kind of the overview of what I want to talk about. So basically, I'm going to go over like preparing, like how to know if you can see them and um, where your location is and forecasts, what equipment is best, and then just tips for going out at night. And then, of course, like shooting them, like my recommended settings, like tips for finding locations in your area, and then like light painting technique for dummies. I just, I like, I'm kind of just a simple girl. I like to make things simple. So not that anyone's a dummy, but just wanted to make it simple. Um, and then editing, like just kind of sharing some of my editing style, again, keeping it simple. And then a little bonus on, you can actually take pictures of the Northern Lights with your phone. So Ooh, kind of going to go over that. Kind of yeah, yeah. So that's kind of my overview of what we're going to go over. So this is my equipment recommendations. Now you do not have to have the latest and greatest equipment. And I, uh, like I said, I just use, I even use a cell phone and I, I actually use a five-year-old Nikon D750. I don't have the latest and greatest equipment. I want to get it. I know a mirrorless and all that great stuff, but I just wanted to share, like, I can use, if I can do it, you can do it. You know, if you don't have to go out and buy all new equipment or anything like that, um, it still works great. And all the pictures, almost all the pictures you'll see were taken with this exact setup, a Nikon D750. 
Um, I recommend a wide angle lens. I currently have a 14 to 24 2.8 and it's fantastic. Um, there is a Rokinon version that's a little less expensive that I used to use. And the, the thing that's nice about that one, it's manual focus only, but you, you do have to just manual focus anyway. So that's kind of nice that you don't have to have an autofocus. And of course, a tripod. So obviously, yeah, that could be important. standing there. Trying to yeah, so that's that's kind of the, that's my equipment, what I use. I'm sure there's other things people can do, but that's kind of my, my current um, equipment lineup. And I really do, like, I do want to upgrade, and I probably will in the next year. But for now, this sole workout horse has been doing good. I think that's the same camera I had when I met you, Chris. <laughs> I probably bought it to, brought it to your course. When it I was brand it. new at that point. Yeah, it was. It probably was. So, okay. And then there's some extras for your camera bag. So I recommend um, some lights for light painting. Um, there's a, something called a Lumi Cube, which is this little battery powered. You can charge it with a USB and it, it gets really bright. Um, or you can just use your cell phone light. And I actually mostly just use my cell phone light. Very low key, very low tech, but it works just in, like an iPhone light. You just put it on the highest setting and you can you can swirl it around when you're taking pictures. Um, also, I don't always use it, but people do recommend like a headlamp. When you're out working in the dark, it's hard to see. Um, and I think, oh, it's not on here, but they recommend doing a headlamp with a red light because it if you have a bright headlamp when you're looking at stuff it kind of messes with your eyes a little bit i don't know if you've ever heard that yeah a red light a red light won't affect your eyes like sometimes when it's really bright then you can't see but a red light will help you see what like if you're digging in your bag or something it won't make your eyes get you know whatever it happens when you're looking and you can't see um of course extra layers like we talked about earlier um rubber boots i wear yep. Sometimes I'm out in the um, in the mud and you want to wear a loot. You just don't want to. And if it's in the summer, you need bug spray for sure. I've been in some pretty crazy locations where there's a lot of mosquitoes, especially in Minnesota. Um, and of course, your cell phone, if you need GPS for finding locations. And of course, extra batteries, because I've done some you know stuff in pretty cold weather and your battery can go dead pretty fast. So you always want to have just basically bring as much as you can with. So. You Especially know that your exposures, those eat up batteries pretty good too. Yes. And there's been times when I've done long exposures in my front yard and I just let the camera go. Well, it was more of a, I don't know, I did like a stacking or no, um, time lapse, sorry. And I let it just go all night and I just went to bed. <laughs> and then I came back out the next morning and I think the battery was just flashing, like almost dead. So, but it was just, I wanted to do a time lapse and I didn't want to wait all night. So it was a nine hour time lapse. And I think it, condensed down to just a few minutes <laughs> so that's that one and then okay so then the next step is it's like a no-brainer but obviously you need, it has to be dark enough to really get good pictures whether it's northern lights or just you know stars um so i people always ask like where do you go well of course you want to go as far north as you can away from city lights because um, city lights will show up in the background and be really bright and kind of you can't see them as well. So, you know, one time I was in a bigger city and I wanted to get the northern lights and they were going on. So my friend and I like drove as far away as we could. It was like, you know, half an hour just to get out of the city lights. Um, and then you can also check your location on an app. Um, it's like a light pollution map. So you can see like where the the it'll be darker. So on this one, you can see like the blue is kind of where you want to go. I'm actually in, I'm where, I don't know if you can see like the little green, that's kind of where I live. So I'm actually on the edge of green. And so I go out into the blue areas and that just means there's less light pollution. Um, and some areas have dark sky parks that you can go to. So Google search your area. If there's like a dark sky park, those are great because they're protected from like a bunch of, you know, crazy lights from people's yards or whatever. So, and then depending on the time of year, you want to try to shoot after blue hour. So blue hour is usually that hour after sunset when you'll see, like, if you take a picture, it looks really bright. You didn't realize it, but it's, there's still the, the sun sets, but there's still like residual light in there. Right. So, yeah. So I would say like, sometimes that happens to me in the summer when I'm looking and I know there's Northern lights and I just can't wait to go out. And it's just, I have to wait till like sometimes 11 PM and before it's really super dark. So depending on the time of year, you want to just kind of make sure you're doing that. And then the other thing people sometimes don't realize is the moon phases. 
when there's like a full moon, sometimes it washes out the northern lights where you can barely see them. Yeah. So it's kind of like timing it. Like if I were to, if somebody was coming and saying, I want to come see the northern lights and I don't, you know, you can't schedule them out too far in advance. Or even if you just wanted to come and take pictures of, of the Milky Way or something, you just look at your calendar or your moon phases and try to pick when it's, I think it's the new moon when it's completely dark and it gets really dark. And that's perfect for taking any sort of night sky pictures. And of course, when you're going to practice, just go out on a clear starry night and with all those tips in mind and, and start practicing. So, yeah. Any questions so far about it? I'm kind of. Other apps or things that you'd <laughs> recommend for, for hunting this out? Yeah, actually, I think I have. Well, for dark sky stuff, this is the. There actually used to be a different app that they, Apple just took down, but it was something about um, dark sky. Um, but the, any sort of light pollution map or something like this, this is, I think this is just called light pollution map. And you can look on your app store or whatever. I use an iPhone, so a lot, all my stuff will be recommended to iPhone. But I think this next one, oh, eventually I will talk about some more apps on how to tell when the lights will come. Um, yeah. So, so you got all your information, you got your, you know, when you're going to go out and you're, you want to start and you got to, I always say like scope out the stuff during the day, obviously first. So here's a little example. I drove out to this gravel pit. I got permission from the owner. Obviously that's one of the things, if you're going to be on private land or somewhere cool, just ask permission so you can be there. And so I got permission and I drove in, I had a completely different shot in mind. And I drove in and I saw these, these tires, like little people. And I'm like, this is awesome. So I just snapped a quick picture with my phone and I kind of put it in my map that I would come back one night when it was, when there was northern lights and do it and so i put yeah put in my gps and then there was northern there was supposed to be northern lights this night but there really wasn't so of course i just still took the picture and i ran around behind it with my light and made a kind of a fun picture like that so that's kind of how that that goes i always just try to check it out during the day so i'm not completely lost i have driven around aimlessly and found things before too like oh here's a cool spot but if you're going to try to do something specific, I always say like, just check it out first in the daytime, make your, you can drop a pin in your phone. Um, because a lot of the places I go are kind of out in the middle of nowhere. I mean, I don't know where we When you're wanting to do the photos, find it ahead. Yeah. Yes. Because sometimes like you'll look at like, oh my gosh, the Northern Lights are dancing and you got to get there real quick. And if you aren't sure where you're going, you can like miss your opportunity because you're driving. So there's a lot of things that could just help when you plan it out first. So, okay, here's what we're talking about, the, the forecast. So a lot, this is the number one question I get. Like, how do you know when there's northern lights? And um, I always say they're they're worse than weather forecasts. They're, they're very finicky. And I just actually just took a quick screenshot of a current northern lights forecast. This actually isn't that great. You want to see the circle of green. You want to see green and red and lots of color on that map it's called an ovation map it kind of gives you an idea of where the northern lights are and if they're going to be you know out that night so um and also check the weather forecast the thing is if you could have the best aurora forecast of all time and there could be clouds and it could just you don't see anything so i always just say check your weather first i check the weather obsessively before like if i hear there's gonna be something going on the first thing i do is look at my phone and I look for that little symbol with the stars and the moon with the little stars. <laughs> and that is, that, yes, a clear night. Now, not to say like the other one with the moon and the half, like clouds can sometimes make really cool pictures. Um, so partly cloudy isn't bad either. You just don't want like fully cloudy because then it's like, what's the point? You, you just wait for another day. <laughs> so check your local weather and, and all that stuff. So there are lots of Aurora apps. So I just say download a bunch. I mean, I, I've got a couple a, um, several of them on my phone. Um, you also want to look at like real time Aurora YouTube channels. Uh, there is, I think a lot of these Aurora things have like links to like, there's, there's something called the Churchill cam. A lot of people do Churchill Manitoba. It's way up in Canada, but I always look at that and I say, Oh, if there's Northern lights on there, then we will, likely see them too on a clear night it's not going to be as good because where i'm at it's a little more south so we aren't going to see it quite as good as them but it it just gives you an idea of something's going on but my number one tip is facebook groups um i heard a lot of people were there was a few people from michigan 
Um, the like Great Lakes Aurora Hunters is a good one. Um, there's a ton of Facebook groups because with Facebook groups, you're going to get real time. People go out and shoot pictures for you. Like, oh, well, here's my test shot. So a lot of people are doing test shots and sharing, you know, what they're seeing and at their at their location. And then that even for me, like I, I sometimes check that before I even I can look out my front door and see something. But sometimes I'm just want to see what other people are seeing. So I would say, look, check your local, check your area, see if there's a Facebook group in your area that has like Aurora chasers, Aurora hunters, whatever. Um, and then once you have all that, I you got to go out to your location that you've put in your GPS or whatever, and you just have to be patient because sometimes you can see people are seeing something, you get out there and there's nothing and you have to wait for hours. So bring a book, bring your phone and be patient and it pays off because sometimes I've been out till three in the morning and nothing happens and then suddenly it explodes and it's it's just amazing so that's kind of my my tips for for trying to find that so like when people ask me that's what I say just use your resources yeah. embrace the group and just <laughs> yeah there's no one and there there's some apps that have like alerts and sometimes they work but and, and sometimes people say the apps are kind of finicky like they aren't a hundred percent like sometimes they'll say there's 0% chance and I'm like, what's going on right now? What are you talking about? But so just do, yeah, do always do research. This is just my suggestion, but there's lots of options out there. So are you going to be out this week hunting? Oh, oh what was that? Are you going to be out this week? Oh, any for, for the, the no. green comments? Oh, I, well, I was mentioning earlier that right now it's like 20 below zero where I'm at. So <laughs> burr. Sometimes if it's really, really cold, I'm not as excited to go out. But if there's something cool, I'll, I'll make it work. Okay, so yeah, I, I I made this whole presentation. I forgot, but yes, I have my suggested apps here. So um, these are the some of the ones that I have on my, I, again, I use Apple, but I'm sure there's stuff for, you know, droids or whatever, but my Aurora forecast and alerts. And this one has, if you can see, it has actual, a list of live Aurora cam, web webcams. So you can click on those and then it'll show you like certain areas around the world. So even if you just want to see what they look like, these webcams are cool because they're showing the live version of it. So that's kind of fun too. And any, of course, the more north you go, like especially in like Alaska and Norway or Iceland, they're going to be amazing. But I always say like I've seen them just as good, you know, here that, that they look in Iceland. So in Northwest Minnesota, where I'm at, or nor in Michigan, in the Upper Peninsula, you can see them just as good on a good night. Might only happen once every couple of years, but it's possible. So and yeah, there's also Space Weather Live is a good one. Um, they're all Facebook groups for a lot of stuff too. And of course, just Google search. So all right. So once you got all your information, you know, you're ready to go, we're going to go out and shoot. Um, again, we're going to scope out your location, set up your tripod, and just start taking test shots. Uh, that's the first thing I do. I just plop down my tripod. I just, you know, get my settings kind of situated and just start taking te test shots. Of course, make sure you have enough space on your cards. Um, I like to format my cards first so they're all clear. And of course, shoot in RAW. That'll be the best quality images um, if you just shoot in RAW. I, when I first started doing Northern Lights for the first couple of shoots, I shot in JPEG and it just wasn't. They just, I still... Sometimes I have to go back and look at those images and pull them up and edit them and they're just not as good. So, um, and then of course, keep your aperture wide open, like 2.8 or as wide as you can go. Use a high ISO, so around 4,000 to 8,000. It depends on your camera. Like I think some of the newer cameras, you can go even higher, but um, just use high ISO. And then set your white balance. If you're just a beginner, like auto or daylight, I actually use like the custom, I like to do Kelvin and just kind of adjust it. Because sometimes I see a lot of people do Northern Lights pictures and their sky is like red or orangey. I always look for you want a, a cooler tone, like a, so you get blue, like a, you're, the sky is a nice deep blue. So just keep taking, you know, test shots until that looks good. Um, and then you're going to do your exposure between like 15 and 30 seconds. And then just keep testing it out. Now, like for this picture, they were kind of quiet. They weren't as wild. Sometimes when the northern lights are really like swirling around and being really crazy, you want to actually, like, you might have to set, put these settings down a little bit because they can get really bright and fast and you actually want to just capture them, the movement a little bit better. So again, it's just, you got to play around with it. But that's kind of my, yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. So that's just my suggestion, just kind of like a starting point. And once you get to your location, especially if you're a more experienced photographer, you know, you just got to you got to test out because it's a different experience when you're out in the middle of, of nowhere. <laughs> and then here's my little thing about light painting. These are all done with a cell phone light. Like this is nothing fancy. I didn't have like crazy like off camera flash or anything. Um, but it just, it's fun to be creative. I feel like you could just do whatever. And during the exposure, so what I do is I set my camera on like, where it just, now I'm like, I'm having a brain fart here, but when you, when it just takes a picture every 30 seconds, you can just set it on an automatic time. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's taking the picture every 30 seconds, it'll take a picture and you can just leave it be and walk around and, um, you know, do your light painting during the exposure. So you don't have to go back and keep hitting it. So it's taking all these long exposures over and over again in the same spot. And then I would just run around. So the one on the left is like one of my favorite pictures. And people are like, is that lightning? Like, what did you do? And I said, I was paint, I was lighting up the inside of this barn with my cell phone. And then I ran back out to turn off the camera or check it. And it like has me running with my, with my light. <laughs> So it kind of shows. We had Misty comment. Yes, interval timer. Like, I know this. Like, why didn't I? Pay for vocab. <laughs> yes. I'm like, Chris knows I'm talking about interval timer. Anyway, yeah. So every camera has a, every camera will be a different setting, but set your interval timer. Um, I think mine, this maybe was a 15 second exposure to go off every, every time. Like, it would take the picture, it would wait a second and take another picture. And the nice thing is, too, I can hear it clicking. So I know, like, when it's taking the picture. So on a, a quiet night, it's kind of fun because I'm just like, okay, taking a picture and I'm going to run around. So anyway, um, the sky, like I said, fill your, fill buildings with light. The, the, the sky's the limit. It's so much fun to do this. It's one of my favorite things. I just kind of go around and light things up. And then when you, when you look at the picture, it's like, this is so cool. I didn't, you know, so these are just some of my favorite ones that I, that I light painted with. And then the same thing with people, people are hard, a little bit harder because people are going to move during the picture. So I try to do maybe a little bit shorter shutter speed to move the, avoid the movement during the photo. I tell the people to just stand really, really still and then just, you know, do the same thing with the interval timer. So these are some fun, like I, this couple got engagement pictures. We didn't even plan this. <laughs> They came like for an evening shoot one summer. And I, again, I was looking at my app and I saw, oh, there's going to be Northern Lights tonight. You guys want to hang out for a couple more hours? And of course they were like, sure. And we kind of, again, we drove around for a couple hours. Nothing was going on. And it was kind of like, okay, you guys want to stay here all night? Or, And so we got a few pictures like with stars. And then all of a sudden they, they blew up. And I was like, okay, get out of the car. Stop. Stand right here. Go, we'll go, go. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's kind of how those go. And some are planned too. this, the senior on the bottom, right. They wanted, they, they live in my town and they wanted Northern lights pictures. So he just waited until this, there was Northern lights possibility. And then I just had him come on out. So that's kind of fun. It's fun to do people, but it's a little trickier. So once you've done your pictures, you got them all and you got to bring them home and you got to start calling because obviously you're going to take a lot of pictures. I take like hundreds. Um, so I actually use a, a program called Photo Mechanic. I don't know if anyone else has different programs, but Photo Mechanic is what I use. Um, you can sort, call, organize, rename them. Um, and I use like positive selection. So I focus on the keepers versus the delete one. So I just like go through them really quickly. I kind of look at the, you know, you can look at them really large and see if they're in focus or not. And then I just keep three or four images per subject. And then I use those to like stack them, which means I don't know how much we'll go into, we'll go a little bit into Photoshop, but I just like, let's just say like three really good pictures and I just stack them on top of each other in Photoshop. And then you can like paint through, we'll go into that next in the next slide, but basically you want to pick the ones you think will be keepers for getting this done. So, and also just go with your gut. If you're not sure which one, just pick your favorites and don't, you don't have to take too much time to dwell on it. You'll, you'll know, like when you look at them, which ones look better. Got a question on uh, shooting from Sony. Yes, uh, so what do you yeah. focus on your camera when you're, you're shooting? 
uh, her camera okay, is I, focusing in the dark. So do you have any tips? Yes. Yes. And I just was saying this, I kind of should have gone into that a little bit more. But so when I'm getting my camera set up, you actually have to try to focus on the stars. So you focus your camera to infinity. So it's that little eight thing. You focus to infinity and you almost have to like just adjust it a little bit. Take the picture and then zoom in on it. Like go into your little plus and like zoom in and see if they're sharp enough on the stars. So that and you have to do um, manual focus. Do not autofocus because it'll never work. It'll never know. So that's but now the, only, the other thing is if you're going to do a subject, then you would kind of focus on the sub. Like if I was to do a, like a car or something, then you could focus on that. But you have to take the picture, focus. And sometimes I really am doing that there. Of course, again, I'm on a little bit older material um, equipment. Nowadays, there's more technology to get things sharper. But what I do old school way, take the picture and just focus it a little bit and then look at it and then you'll see if it's sharp enough. So that's kind of where you start. You just have to keep doing it until it's sharp and make sure it's sharp before you go. Cause once it's, once it's in focus, the nice thing is it's in focus for the rest of the time that you're shooting that spot. There was one time I didn't, I was so excited and I didn't do it quite sharp enough. And there was this really rare phenomenon with some light thing in the sky and they were all out of focus. And I was so mad. I'm like, I tried to sharpen it after, but it, it just didn't work. So, but yeah, that's a, that was a great question. I'm sorry. I should have gone over that a little clearer, but yeah, that's a big, a big thing. Cause you will focus on the stars yeah. and then um, do yeah. a, a review or um, recall up the image, zoom in and make sure yeah. that's in focus. Yeah. Zoom in. And like, if it's a little bit blurry, like all you do is just, just very minimal. And then you, and then you go look through the last picture. Okay. This one's the sharpest. I'm not going to touch it. So yeah. Very cool. Thank you. Awesome. Yeah. And then editing. So I edit in, I import the raw images into Lightroom and just, just basic stuff. I just kind of, um, I like things to pop, of course. So again, I don't use any presets or anything because every image to me is going to look different and how I want to do it. So I'm a pretty basic Lightroom user. I don't do too many crazy things. I bump the exposure up a little bit. I like to pull the highlights down, bring up the shadows pop some of the, you know, the contrasts and like, you don't have to do too much because, you know, mother nature does all the rest. I mean, this is just a picture of a dock and you just bring out the, the colors and the sharpness. And it's just amazing, especially because you're just doing a lot of exposure and it's like capturing all this cool stuff. So, um, so yeah, just do, I just do the sliders and just make everything how I like it. And then I batch edit maybe three to five of them. Again, you don't need a million of them. It's not like shooting portraits. See, I'm a portrait photographer. So um, I am used to like taking a million pictures and making sure they're smiling. And this you really don't need to do a lot. So, and this also shows you, you don't, I mean, yes, I'm teaching about Northern Lights, but if there's not Northern Lights, you can have really cool pictures just from the Milky Way and, and just the stars. So, so anyway, yes, I start with Lightroom and then I go into Photoshop and this is where I would open those three to five images and you stack them together. There is a way to open and stack. I'm not going to get too complicated into editing, but like you could just put them on top of each other and then um, use the layer masks if you're familiar with that. And then you would just kind of paint it. So for example, like when I say paint, you're just erasing that layer. So the under layer where I did the lights. So this church, I did a dark picture with nothing in it. It was just the picture of the church. And then during the exposure of the second one, I went and stood by each window and like held my phone up or I was inside the church lighting up the windows. And then when I took the pictures to edit them, I just put the two together and like, that's how it ended up. So, um, and, and whatever your editing style is, you don't have to do all this crazy stuff. The picture would have been beautiful on its own without that. You don't have to do that, but I always like to do creative lighting stuff so like you're that doing an hdr you're um, using the layers on the stacks to reveal the light painting that you've done is that correct? yes yeah yeah exactly i kind of just make it myself so um and just kind of how i want it to look depending on you know if i want to do light up a window or the side i try to light things from the side or from behind i don't usually do it head on because I just think it looks too flat. So I was trying to do something a little bit like to the side. And when you're doing that layer stacking or whatever, you I have to erase myself out of it, obviously. So you don't see me in it. But I've had some funny ones where I for, I kind of look like a ghost in the background, like just for the picture. I'm like, this is kind of cool. I should have I should have left some in here, but there's a lot of funny outtakes, I think, of me running around with my 
<laughs> my lights. So, um, but yeah, just be creative. Use your skills to create your vision of what you want it to look like. This is just how I do it. Um, and just, yeah, go nuts with whatever you want. It's like such a creative type of photography, I think. You can just do do whatever you want to make the skies pop and color and light up things. So, Do you ever use like auto align and auto blend layers in Photoshop? Yeah, yeah. Yes, I've done some of that too. Yeah, there's ways to just... So play around see what makes you happy is kind of the sounding like what the answer is yes that's what i do yes i'm like i said i'm a very i'm i'm a very simple person i'm there's so many ways to do it but i just like to mess around with it but yeah the blending layers i've done where you just kind of go through the each one and see what it looks like <laughs> so yeah it's cool it's cool what it comes up with for sure all right so then i want to talk a little bit too about like printing your photos um, obviously this is like no brand so print at the high or save at the highest resolution. Um, I never really change anything. Once I save it to JPEG, I don't like resize it or anything. I just let it be. And they've always printed really good. Um, I prefer printing my images on metal or acrylic because they are like super sharp. They make your colors pop and people love them. Like anytime I've had anyone order them, they're just blown away by how like sharp they look and how good the colors come through. Yeah, they're they're really fun to they print. Feel three D once you shine a light on them, just how they reflect. Yeah, them. yes, it's so beautiful. Yeah, and they just it the colors look the best on there. I mean, if I've done some canvas, which are okay, but it's just nothing to compare to metal or acrylic. And then don't be afraid to print a big. I mean, I love doing like a big twenty four by thirty or forty by sixty or whatever, and they just they're they're really really cool. So yeah, impact mm -hmm. most definitely. And for everybody yes. watching, you're going to love the uh, special that ACI oh, yeah, has for yeah. us. I'll share it at the very end of the program, but uh, uh, keep in mind, we've got cool printing stuff. Yes, I know. I, it's it's awesome to get, to see your work in print is amazing. I'm The first time I ever printed any of my stuff. What's that? It brings it to life. Oh, yes. It's real. Yeah, because look at it every day, not just on a phone. When you, when you look at it on the screen and you're, it's just, it's not the same as getting it printed. And I always tell people like, you really want to get your stuff printed because it just, it, it's so much better than just a digital image on, on the printer or on the, on the computer. You just want to see it big. You want to see it on the wall. You want to show your friends, like, look at this awesome picture I took instead of just like on your phone and scrolling through or whatever. So all right. Okay. So I have a little bonus uh, here, a little bit more about, I said in the beginning about using your phone to take pictures um, in low light. So this is, I will say this is about the iPhone. I'm an iPhone person. So you can do this with other phones as well. Um, if you have an iPhone 11 and up that supports night mode, um, you can do this. So anytime your phone detects low light, it will, the icon will turn yellow. So you might see that if you're not as familiar with it, it'll show that it's active. And so basically in night mode, the camera is going to take multiple shots over several seconds, and then it kind of automatically blends them together into like a single photo. So it looks brighter with, you don't need to use a flash or anything. Um, so you can see on this picture, like I was actually taking a picture of my phone, taking a picture of the Northern Lights to kind of show how that looks. Um, and I use a tripod so that's that you can buy an iPhone or any kind of phone, mobile phone tripod that kind of pinches it, holds it together. And the one I have is like the the legs are kind of twisty, so you can like attach it to a tree or the hood of your car or not the the mirror on your car. Like it can hold on to stuff. It's kind of cool. So you don't need to just be stuck with just one single tripod. And I took a bunch of Northern Lights pictures or dark. I just even the one of the tree, and that's with my phone. It's just crazy how how much better. And and when it takes the picture, it doesn't look as good. But when the picture's all put together, it really does look nice. Um, so, and, and if you're going to do it, if you, you can hand help, hand hold it. Um, and if you do with iPhone 14, you're in up iOS 14 and up, it'll detect when you're doing the photo and you're going to see little crosshairs that show up and you're going to try to hold it really still. So that crosshair doesn't move and that'll help you get a picture too. So I've done that when I've just had nothing and I just had to take the picture. I just like called it really still and did it. So, um, and then you can also use, um, like a small flashlight to do light painting because obviously when you're doing it with your phone, you can't use your phone's light. So you could use that Lumi cube or just another flashlight to light up the foreground just to make it more, you know, 3D or creative there. So 
Yeah, it's all about what and you put on your personal twist, huh? What was that? It, it's all about the twist that you put on it. What makes it your art? Yes. Yes. Uh-oh. I think we're freezing or I've lost you. Oh, no. <laughs> and then make it there longer. Are, or... back. Oh, sorry. Oh, we lost did you. I get, did I get alert? Oh, and it says my internet is unstable. Okay, is it better now? Yep, yep. We can hear you now. <laughs> okay. I think my kids came home and decided to watch a movie or something. So maybe that's why. <laughs> anyway. Okay, well, let me know if I go away again. Okay, you're currently um, with us. Okay. Oh, so, so anyway, I was saying about how the iPhone... What you can also adjust how long this, the exposure is on there for like, I think up to 30 seconds. Um, so there's actually a way to change that on the phone too. You can like adjust it on there so that can help you. So obviously more seconds make a brighter photo. So well, that makes sense. General all right. photography, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that's all I have for kind of my main, you know, presentation here. Um, but if anyone has questions or anything yeah i'm sure about we'll have some questions anything that i talk about uh, so if you do have questions put them into chat now uh, while we're doing that mm -hmm. i've got a little bit of housekeeping some prizes to give away and all that fun stuff so uh, uh i'm sure we've definitely got some questions that are coming so put them into chat now so while we're looking yeah. at that though uh, uh here we got that preview of the the special from aci you can get 30 percent off of metals um, and that's good through the uh, 15th. Um, so just make sure you jot down this code on here so uh, you can get your Northern Lights images printed up or anything that you want. Uh, uh, but thanks to uh, ACI for making that one possible. Do you want to let you know about the upcoming shows that we have, Making Your Art Personal uh, with Julie. That one's coming up. And then Old Hollywood Lighting with Phil, uh, mm -hmm. which is also going to be a blast. So registrations open on both of those. So be sure to check that out. And of course, if you do have ideas for future episodes, content like this that you'd like to see, uh, be sure to uh, put it into chat or shoot me an email, hello at cwoolly.com, and I'll see who I can track down that might be an expert on that subject. Okay, so let's give away some of our... Uh, pro oh, want to put back up that code again. Uh, so I've got that screen up here. It's MS30 Metals. MS30 Metals. I'm also going to be emailing you uh, this code as well. So if you don't have your pen handy, uh, check your email about an hour after the show and you'll get it. All right. So now let's do our prizes. Up first, we've got a $50 lab credit to American Color Imaging. And let's see who's winning that one. We got the wheels spinning. Hey, we're earnest. All right, congratulations on that one. Up next, we've got a $75 credit. So let's see who's winning that one. Hey, it's Catherine. Congratulations on that one. And now we've got one more prize to give away, and that's a $100 lab credit. So let's see who's winning that one. You could totally use it to get some of your medals printed up, too. Yay! And it's Ashley. Get that one recorded and cool. We are set on that front. So congratulations to the winners. I'm going to put up that uh, special one more time so uh, you can write down that code if need be. And let's come back and uh, uh, ask some questions. So does anybody have any questions for Megan? Are we all just blown away. Lots of thank yous <laughs> so much on that one. <laughs> oh, good. Uh, people excited about Yeah, I covered a lot. <laughs> It was a lot to cover, but cool. So it's um, fun. I know that uh, uh, like that slide that we just saw. Um, I guess it's not up there anymore. We got the thank you one, but oh. uh, from your iPhone, you've got a, a course on iPhone photography, don't you? Yes, I have a little a little player. Um, if you want to learn more, if you're an iPhone user, for now it's iPhone. I eventually plan on doing more, but um, I have a course on how to learn your iPhone camera in just one day. It just 
teaches you all sorts of tips and tricks and how to go through all the settings, um, hidden shortcuts that save time, how to get brighter and sharper photos, learning how to edit on your phone. So you get like really bright, nice pictures, clear. Um, all the pictures on this little example we're taking with my phone. Um, and you not, you don't have to use filters. It's really just how to use your phone. I mean, they're so powerful and they're only getting better and better. Um, I also teach about composition, how to get really great shots and a lot more. And I said I would get a $50 coupon today for anyone that wants to join. And you can use Northern Light and you dash course.com and you can check it all out there's all sorts of more information on there and a little like intro video and kind of more about it so that's a little plug send that, uh, information <laughs> and it, in the uh, follow-up email as well um just oh, in perfect. Case you aren't taking yeah. notes uh you can do that because uh lots of us like to watch the replay turns out a lot easier yes. to, to follow along uh do have one question before we let you go do your kids get to come out with you at all and photograph oh this is a great question i actually um, when I very first started, I had a baby and he was nine months old. So he was still getting up in the middle of the night. So I always tell people like, they'd ask me, how can you get up in the middle of the night and do this and be awake? And I said, I I'm up with my baby anyway. So I used to take him with me. So I would just get up with my baby and put him in his car seat. You know how kids like to be in the car and he would come with me on my little adventures. And again, want to mention I live in a small town I live out in the country so I just took my baby, baby drove out in the, into the dark and he would just sleep in his car seat while I did pictures and a lot of the, that first year he was just with me and then eventually of course he started staying at home and then my older when they got older and some of my older kids I have two older boys I would say come out there's northern lights and then they would come out kind of out of their beds like what you know and take you know took a couple pictures of them um, but now that you know they're older and I'm they aren't they don't come as much but yeah when I was first starting out he was with me for a lot of stuff oh that's a fun so, story kind of get your, your start into it uh, <laughs> yeah yeah and it like I said it was it, it was that age that age that they're up and it and it's actually I said that now that now that my kids are all sleeping through the night, it is a little harder for me to get up sometimes and take pictures in the middle of the night because I'm not used to it as much as I was back when my kids were little. That and that minus 20 weather, right? <laughs> well, that too, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's well, that that's hard. Thank you so very much, Megan, for sharing your passion with us and giving us some tips and great resources on how to get started and how to be successful at photographing the Northern Lights. Uh, I know I got a whole bunch out of it, and just looking at the chat, it looks like our, our audience did too. So thank you, thank you for sharing all of that. Thanks for having me. This was fun. <laughs> all right. Well, have a great night, everybody, and I hope you get to uh, enjoy some of the Northern Light photography coming up. <laughs> all right. Bye, everyone.